Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and today it is all about the Luxman D10X SA CD player. Now, I've owned or reviewed my fair share of very high-end digital products, DCS, Meridian, uh, MSB Technology, Audio Research, Total DAC. I mean, I've all, yeah, they've all come through. I like them. This one, the D10X, is something else. First of all, it looks and feels elegant. It is a luxury product, and you can't really say that about a lot of high-end electronics, right? This one is, and it is made in Japan. It, you know, it couldn't have been made anywhere else. It really, it, it feels like that. It's just on this different level of, of luxury and build quality. Uh, you know, for example, the, the, well, when you go to open the disc tray, it just glides open. You don't hear that plastic metal eject, ejecting sound. It's silent. It just glides open. You put the disc in, hit play, it silently returns, and the music begins. It's such a simple thing, <laughs> but it's so rare. The sound is, is also elegant, refined. It's highly transparent. But it's not the sort of transparency that shouts at you. It just is. Well, kind of like the way real music sounds in, in real life, right? It doesn't scream transparency when you're hearing uh, a concert at Carnegie Hall. No, it just is. It just fills the room. And that's, that's also part of what I love about the sound of the D10X. It just opens up in a very effortless sort of way. It just is. It just, there is the music. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm expressing it this way because it's so rare. Now I'll have a lot more to say about what it sounds like further on in this review, but I'm going to give you some of the, of the tech details. And by the way, um, it really should be called uh, the D10X SACD player slash DAC because it does have inputs. You can a stream through it. It has a USB input, it has a coaxial input, and an optical input. It also handles DSD files, 10x DSD. So it is sort of a, is that, is that even correct to say? It's a streamer. But anyway, you can play files and external digital sources through the D10X. And I did, and I played, actually for the high res part, I didn't play DSD because eh, it's not my thing, but I did play some of the upcoming soon, coming soon, MA Recordings Audiophiliac High Resolution Sampler, uh, which will be free. And uh, so I played some of those. And yeah, when you hear audiophile quality, high res files in high res, it is at another level. It just is. You hear, as I've said before recently, you hear into the quiet parts of the music. You hear the room, you hear the hall. And that's what makes it special. And when you're hearing uh, less good <laughs> recordings. You just hear the music. You have no sense of where it is. You may hear reverb, you know, reverberation that's added in post-production, but you don't have a sense of place. And with the MA recordings and other really high quality, high resolution recordings, you do. You hear the space, the room, the acoustics that the musicians are playing in. Another thing is the D10X is equipped with MQA, so you can play MQA encoded CDs. There's not that many, but Chesky has made a bunch, and the 2L label has also made MQA CDs. And you can stream MQA from Tidal through the D10X. Now, I've been collecting SA CDs for over 20 years, since the format was introduced, or 20 years, since the format was introduced. So I have hmm, maybe 100 SACDs. And I'll talk about the SACDs sound later in this review, but I mostly played CDs. That's what I mostly did. Regarding what's under the hood, the disc transport mechanism is made in Japan. The whole player is made in Japan, but the disc mechanism is made in Japan. I've never seen anything like it. I'm showing you a picture of it right now. Um, again, this is on a different plane than what you usually see. It's using a new version of a DAC, 
I know nothing about this DAC, but I think the D10X is the first player in the world to use this DAC. It has balanced analog circuitry. Build quality is at the level it deserves to be. Because this is, if you haven't already guessed, a very, very, very expensive machine. It is $16,495 in the United States. It is. There are many more affordable options out there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've never heard any that can compete with this. I also want to mention that this machine was on loan to me from Stereo Exchange, a store in New York City. So thanks goes out to Stereo Exchange for doing that. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the name, with the brand, Luxman, it's a Japanese company. Uh, they were founded in 1925 by making radios and they've gone on to make most parts of audio systems, turntables, electronics for amplifiers, tubes, solid state. They have done it all and they've done it all at a very, very, very high level. Another fun fact is it, well, the fun, at least in the abstract, it weighs 50 pounds. So picking this thing out, taking this thing out of the box and hoisting it up to an equipment rack, well, it took some energy. I'm an old guy, you know, I needed some help. Uh, Mrs. Audiophiliac was on hand, luckily, so we brought it up to the, to the rack. But the, the metal work, the build quality is absolutely superb. This is the very first disc I played. This is a CD. Leonard Cohn's Thanks for the Dance. It came out after he passed away. It's great. It, it's, it's so full of life. And his voice, wow. I, I've been listening to Leonard Cohn for decades, and I've never heard his voice sound quite like this. So human, so naturally balanced, so completely present. Really spectacular. And I love, I, this musically, this is a fantastic record. It's one of his best, you know, la later period records. And uh, when, I, when I first heard it, I liked it. But hearing it over the D10X, it really was, it just engaged me on a different level. I was, because it, it, it felt like Leonard was in the room. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want from the best of this, is I want that experience of that connection to the artist making their music. Then I played REM live at the BBC. This is a box set as you can plainly see and the disc from 1998 done in a small BBC studio with a small studio audience. Wow! Because Michael Stipe, he was connecting with the crowd. I, maybe there was 20-30 people in the audience so he could see everybody. They're playing for this small crowd. It's being broadcast live presumably over the BBC and Wow, what a performance. The band, their rhythmic drive, their energy, Michael Stipe's vocals just are killing. I don't particularly like REM studio records. Live ones would do it for me. And this one in particular, and this whole box actually, really, really good stuff. I think that the D10X just took it to another level of crossing over, the, crossing through that reality barrier, just like busting through that reality barrier. But this very straight ahead recording. So as for SACDs, I played a bunch, but I also played these uh, for audiophile quality stuff. I stuck with 2L and Chesky records, but these are the, these are the two L's that I used. That's the first one, that's the second one, this is the third, just superb, superb recordings um, and some various Chesky's. So it does SACD really, really well, but I needed to go back. I needed to travel back in time to Allman Brothers Live at the Film Maurice. I think it's 1969 or 1970. I've played this recording uh, a billion times over the years and here that sense of being at the Fillmore but I, I went to the film more and saw lots of great shows. Not this, not these, unfortunately. But that sense of the sound just coming forward from the speakers and just hearing the band in the film more. Not just the band, but hearing the film more. It had a the film more had a specific quality to the sound. I don't mean the sound coming out of the speakers in the film more. I mean the room itself, the concert hall itself, just had this perfect, perfect ambiance for rock music and uh, hearing this recording I felt that and hearing the, the drummers and Dwayne's guitar and 
it was perfect. I mean, again, I, it crossed through some sort of reality barrier, and I was one happy camper. Then I played this. This is uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan with Albert King. This is an SACD, and it's a, it's a TV broadcast, I believe. And uh, it's a small studio, and it's the young, very young Stevie Ray Vaughan, I think he's 25 years old, meeting an elder statesman of the blues, his hero, and them, those two having this musical connection in front of a, of a television audience. And you just feel that, that intimacy. You just feel that, that intimacy of these two musicians connecting and playing off each other with a band. In between the tunes, you hear the, the banter between the two. They're enjoying each other. They just are. And you are there. It's a you are there experience. Then back to CDs. This is the trumpeter John Hassel with uh, Ry Cooter, plays guitar, and some other musicians. And this was recorded in a church. This is an audiophile recording done by the great Cavi Alexander for his label, Water Lily Acoustics. And his re entire recording chain is custom made. It was, this is an analog recording. The, the reel to reel recorder, the preamps, the mic, even the microphones themselves, all done by Tim DeParavicini and in a great sounding acoustic space in California. And the dynamics, the life force of this, mu of this music happening. Now, it's not, a, it's not a rock and roll record. It's almost ambient in its, in its quiet and spaciousness of the trumpet and guitar and percussion. Gorgeous recording, piano, wonderful, wonderful recording. And to hear it emerge with the D10X in my system was spectacular. So for contrast, I play this one again, but this time with the Jay's Audio CD Transport and the Denifreps Terminator DAC, not the Plus, just the plain DAC. The contrast was, was large <laughs> because as much as I love the Jay's Audio and the Terminator, well, they sounded smaller. They sounded tonally leaner, dynamically flatter, the space of the church itself was, was smaller. So uh, it was kind of a letdown, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, um, but it was. So then I returned to the D10X and uh, it was just bigger. More, there was more there there. And I thought for a second, wait a minute, are there tubes in this? In this? Because I guess Luxman makes tube electronics and solid state like Maybe this is a tube, maybe I missed something in the, when I was looking over the specs. No, no, it's 100% solid state, but it does have a tube-like glow to the sound. There is that, I hate to use the word, holographic presentation of spaciousness that just opens up. And the Denifreps, Jay's Audio, had significantly less of that. Now, they're both highly transparent. The, the, the Denifreps is a very, very, very clear... Uh, immediate sounding DAC. The D10X is just as transparent, but it's filled out. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's transparency with glow, with warmth, with a solidity to the sound that the Denifreps just can't match. I, so I think at this point you've picked up on my uh, excitement, my enthusiasm for the Luxman D10X. It's one of those that I will never get over. <laughs> because uh, w Mrs. Audiophilic and I packed it up this morning to send it back to Stereo Exchange. And I had, I had a little, little tear in the corner of my eye saying, goodbye, <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I, I, I gotta figure out how to get something like that back. But I always move forward, I'm moving forward. But this. This concludes my review of the Luxman D10X SACD player slash DAC. And uh, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it and telling you about this incredible machine. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Um, 136 or 137,000 subscribers, but there's still room for you. If you have not yet subscribed, please do. You're welcome. You are welcome here. We're, we're a family. We're a group. So please join us. Uh, that would be terrific. Uh, and when you do, and well, join or not join, 
when when I do a video that you think is spectacular, please give me a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm is looking for those thumbs up things, so supposedly it helps. Um, check out the Patreon, which can be found at p a t r e o n dot com slash audiophiliac. And yes, there's a link to that below. You should check out these T-shirts, the audiophiliac T-shirts. There is link. There is a link to that as well. And of course, there are playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews, electronics reviews and music reviews. They're all here on the Audiophiliac Daily Show channel. So my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye bye.